हेलो एवरीवन आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग ग्रेट वेलकम बैक टू अ चैनल अगला सेम स्कूल्स टुडे इन दिस वीडियो आई विल बी कवरिंग चैप्टर 3 ऑफ क्लास 10 सोशल इकोनॉमिक्स दैट इज मनी एंड क्रेडिट सो लेट्स डिस्कस क्वेश्चन एंड आंसर्स नाउ टर्न टू पेज नंबर 52 हियर क्वेश्चन नंबर 1 सेज इन सिचुएशंस विद हाई रिस्क क्रेडिट माइट क्रिएट फर्दर प्रॉब्लम्स फॉर द बोरोवर एक्सप्लेन आंसर इज फर्स्ट High risk situations occur in rural areas because there the main demand for credit is for crop production which involves considerable cost on seeds, fertilizers, pesticides, water, electricity, repair of equipments. Second, there is a minimum stretch of 3 or 4 months between the time when farmers buy these inputs and when they sell the crop. Third is, Farmers generally take crop loans at the beginning of the season and repay the loan after harvest. Fourth, repayment of a loan is crucially dependent on the income from farming. Further, question number two says, How does money solve the problem of double coincidence of wounds? Answer is, in a barter system where goods are directly exchanged without the use of money, double coincidence of wounds is an essential feature. By serving as a medium of exchange, money removes the need of double coincidence of wounds and the difficulties associated with the barter system. For example, it is no longer necessary for the farmer to look for a book publisher who will buy the cereals at the same time sell him books. All he has to do is find a buyer for the cereal. If he has exchanged his cereals for money, he can purchase any goods or service which he wants. This is because money acts as a medium of exchange. Further moving to our question number 3 which says, How do banks mediate between those who have surplus money and those who need money? Answer is, first, people hold money as deposits with bank which pay an interest rate on them. Second, people do not withdraw their cash daily. Third, the bank therefore hold only 15% of the deposits as cash with themselves in order to pay the depositors who might came to withdraw money from the bank on any given day. Fourth, since on any particular day only some of its money depositor come to withdraw cash, the bank is able to manage with this cash. Further, question number 4 says, look at the 10 rupee note. What is written on top? Can you explain this statement? Reserve Bank of India and the guaranteed by the government are written on top. So answer is, in India, the Reserve Bank of India issues currencies notes on behalf of the central government. This statement means that the currency is authorized or guaranteed by the central government. That is, Indian law legalized the use of a rupee as a medium of payment that cannot be refused in the setting transaction in India. Further, question number 5 says, why do we need to expand formal source of credit in India? Answer is, first, the money lender for the agriculture traders charge a much higher interest on loans. They generally charge 5% per month, whereas the bank charge about 10 to 15% per annum. The higher rate of interest does little to increase the income of a borrower. Second, the farmers who take loans for a trader are forced to sell their crops to him at a low price. As a result of it, the farmers suffer while the traders make a profit by selling gains at a high price. For the third is, higher interest means the borrower has to pay a major portion of his earning to repay the interest and the principal of a loan. This sometimes leads to debt trap for the borrowers. For the fourth is, on the other hand, Bank and cooperatives charge less interest and do not exploit the borrowers. Under these circumstances, there is a need for expansion of formal source of credit in India. It is also necessary that everyone receives these loans. Further, question number 6 says, What is the basic idea behind the SHGs for the poor? Explain in your own words. Answer is, the basic idea behind the SHGs is to provide a finance resource for the poor through organizing the rural poor, especially women, into small self-help groups. They also provide timely loans at a responsible interest rate without collaborator. Thus, 
The main objective of SHGs are first to organize rural poor, especially women, into small self-help group. Second, to collect the saving of their members. Third, to provide loans without collaborator. Fourth, to provide timely loans for a variety of purpose. Fifth, to provide loans at a responsible rate of interest and easy terms. Further moving to our question number seven, which says. What are the reasons why the bank might not be willing to lend to certain borrowers? Answer is first, banks require proper documents and collateral as security against loans. Some persons fail to meet their requirements. Second, the borrowers who have not repaid previous loans, the banks might not be willing to lend them further. Third, the banks might not be willing to lend those entrepreneurs. Who are going to invest in the business with high risk? And the fourth is one of the principal objective of the bank is to earn more profit after meeting a number of expenses. For the question number eight says, in what ways does the Reserve Bank of India supervise the functioning of banks? Why it is necessary? Answer is the Reserve Bank of India monitors the amount of money that bank loans out and also the amount of cash balance maintained by them. It also ensures that banks give out loans not just to profiting businesses but also to small cultivators, small scale industries, and small borrowers. Periodically, banks are supposed to submit information to the RBI on the amount lent to whom and at what rate of interest. For the question number nine says, analyze the role of credit for development. Answer is first, it helps in increasing economic activities of the borrowers. Second, if credit is made available to the poor people on reasonable terms and conditions, they can improve their economic condition. This will help in the overall development. And the third is, credit may increase the activities in the secondary sector, that is, manufacturing sector. Thus, with credit, people could grow crops, do business, set up small-scale industries. For the question number ten says. Manav needs a loan to set up a small business. On what basis will Manav decide whether to borrow from the bank or the money lender? Discuss. Answer is Manav will decide whether to borrow from the bank or the money lender on the basis of the following terms of credit: first, rate of interest; second, requirements, availability of collateral and documentation required by the banker; and the third is mode of repayment. For the question number eleven says, in India, about eighty percent of farmers are small farmers who need cultivation. Part A says, why might banks be unwilling to lend to small farmers? Answer is, the banks might be unwilling to lend to small farmers because the farmers usually take crop loans at the beginning of the season and repay the loan after harvest. Repayment of loan is dependent on the income from farming, and In case of crop failure, repayment become impossible. In such cases, the recovery of loans from the small farmers become very difficult. The small farmers have to sell part of the land to repay the loan. That is why bank do not want to give loans to the small farmers. For the B part is, what are the other sources from which the small farmers can borrow? Answer is, small farmers usually borrow from money lenders or agricultural traders. C part is explained with an example of how the terms of credit can be unfavorable for the small farmers. Answer is in case of failure of crops, it become impossible for small farmers to repay the loan by selling their crops. Thus, in order to repay, the small farmers sell a part of land. This leads to worsening of their conditions. Sometimes, small farmers give security against loans. In case of non-payment of loan. The lender may sell the security to recover the loan. Under above condition, the term of credit become unfavorable for the small farmer. For the D part is suggest some ways by which small farmers can get cheap credit. Answer is beside banks, the other major source of cheap credit in rural areas are the cooperative societies or cooperatives. Members of cooperative societies pull their resources for cooperation in certain areas. The cooperative accepts deposits from its members. With these deposits, the securities the cooperative obtain loans from the bank. 
These funds are used to provide loans to members. Further moving to our question number 12 which says filling the blanks. First, majority of the credit needs of a dash households are met from informal sources. Answer is poor. Second, dash cost of borrowing increase the debt burden. Answer is high. For the third is dash issues currency notes on behalf of a central government. Answer is the Reserve Bank of India. Fourth, banks charge a higher interest rate on loans than what they offer on dash. Answer is deposits. Fifth, dash is an asset that the borrowers owns and uses as a guarantee until the loan is repaid to the lender. Answer is security. Further moving to our question number 13 which says, choose the most appropriate answer. First, in an SHG, most of the decisions regarding saving and loan activity are taken by answer is members. Second, formal sources of credit do not include answer is employers. So guys, here I've covered all the questions of this chapter in this video. I hope you like this video. And if you have any query or any doubt related to any of the questions discussed, please put your query in the comment section below. For more such NCRT solutions, Keep watching and do not forget to subscribe our channel Aggressive Schools and do not forget to wear a mask and take good care of your health.